Head over to miniaturemarket.com and play with thousands of board games at discounted prices like Mountain Goats. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going to be mountain goats, climbing up different sizes of mountains, trying to get to the top to get a bunch of bonus points, and trying to have a variety of those mountains to get even bigger bonus points. Today we're taking a look at mountain goats. This is from All Play, and let me show you how it works. It's a sort of a pressure, not really pressure luck, but it's a, it's a dice game where you're trying to you know, get up to the mountain for points. Let me show you how it works. In Mountain Goat, you have these cute Mountain Goat meeples, and you have these big chunky dice, and you're gonna be using these dice to create sets of different numbers to have these Mountain Goats go up the different mountains. Let's show you. So we have the game set up. Each player's gonna take a turn, they're gonna roll these four dice. They're gonna make sets of those dice, and depending on the sets they make, they're gonna be climbing up different mountains from number five up to number 10. Now it's easiest, because of the way that you can select the dice and the values of the dice, to move up these two areas, and it gets a little harder and then a little harder, then that's why these mountains are shorter than these because it's less spaces to get up here because when you get to the top, you're going to get some points. So let's show you how it works. So you're going to roll the dice and then you're going to create any amount of sets that you want. And the sets that you make, that's the goat that you're moving up. For example, if I put these two together, my nine goat, because you add those up, would go up once on the nine uh, mountain. Here is eight. Now my eight goat would go up one. But maybe instead we want something like this where it's like I go up once on the ten, I go up once on the seven. But let's say I rolled something like this. You can have three different sets. These two have me go up a six. This has me go up a six. This has me go up a five. Let's look at that. So let's say I was the yellow player. I would go up once on the five, and I would go up twice on the six because there were uh, two sixes there. Now, if there was another goat there, it's okay. You guys can share spaces anywhere except the very top of the mountain. Now, let's say I got those two sixes, and this is where I started. Well, when I get here, I'll get this. This is going to be worth six points at the end because it has a six on it. But I still had another six. I would take another one. Now let's say next turn, I get two more sixes. While I'm still at the top of the mountain, six, six. But let's say someone else finally comes up and goes, okay, I've had enough of you being up there. As soon as someone else gets to the top, anyone, anyone else there goes all the way back down to the bottom, and then they're gonna get one of these. And that's generally how it works. Now there's a certain amount of these tokens per mountain. There's more of the fives and sixes than the tens, for example. But once they're empty, no one else can get points up there. Now the first one to get a set of one of each of the mountain tokens will take the highest bonus. So that one will get this, the next player gets this. You might get two sets of everything and get a second one of these, and these are going to be worth face value at the end of the game as well. Now the last little twist here is pretty cool. Ones aren't very good in this game. If you roll more than one one, like here we have two of them, any, addition, any ones past the first one are wild. You can make this into anything. So I might make this into, you know, a five, and then I could go like this and go five, five, five. Or I could go, hey, 10 and five or what have you. You get to make it anything you want for any of the dice past one die that have ones on them. That's really cool. This continues until the last big bonus token has been taken by having different sets. Or when any three mountains have their last token taken, that's the end of the game. You count up all your points. Whoever has the most is the winner. All right, now before I get to my final thoughts, I wanna let you know that if you like my content, there's now ways to get bonus content like first impression videos well before a review will come out or for many games I don't even end up reviewing. You can even vote for which games get reviewed on the channel. You can also see me opening up packages and getting content earlier than everyone else. And now you can see what you're missing with a free seven day trial at patreon.com slash gameboygeek. All right, first thing I like about this is it's portable. I mean, it's basically a game that fits in your pocket and it's got cute goat meeples. Okay, first good thing. Uh, second is the game expands out. It's in this tiny little box, but then by the time you set the game up, it takes up a decent amount of the table. It's kind of like a tiny epic style game where those tiny epic games from Game of Games where they, they sprawl out to these big things. You wouldn't expect a game that looks this small in this box to expand out to that big. So kind of has a little bit of wow factor there for, well, I didn't expect this thing to, to, <laughs> to look this big on here. Um, this is an improvement on what I appear to be is six Sid Saxon's classic game, Can't Stop. I love Sid Saxon, he's one of my favorite designers. I loved Can't Stop, um, but this takes what Can't Stop did and quite honestly makes it better. To the point where I think this has replaced Can't Stop for me. I know it's a bad thing to say because gosh, the, the nostalgic of that, the nostalgia. But the big thing here is it's much like in, in, in Can't Stop, you've got four dice, you roll them and you're making sets. But it can't stop, you have to take the four dice and make two sets. Here you have the flexibility of choosing any amount of dice sets. 
So you might be using multiples of them for this one and that's it. Or you might use this one, this one, and this one for these sets. You have all the flexibility in choosing the dice sets. And that really opens up the decision space here. It actually makes it a little bit faster. Because it can't stop you like, oh, you do every permutation in your head. It's like, oh, I got this and this, or this or this, or this or this, or this or this. Here, you theoretically, you have more options, but it actually ends up being faster because people know what they want to do. They know which mountain they want to go up, and then they roll the dice and they go, can I get there? And they go, yes, what, the, what does that leave me? Eh, you know, the decision space is more, but for some reason it still moves faster and there's less downtime than it can stop. I don't know why, it just does, it flows better. Uh, I like that when you roll ones, you know, ones are low. They're not good in this game. But if you roll more than one one, any of those past one can be a wild number. You can make them anything you want. That's great. That's like a brilliant little thing, a very streamlined rule that helps them sort of make the design work. And it works really well. It's like, oh, great. You roll one one, you're like, ah, kind of stuck. I roll two ones, fantastic. I can make this one this, I can do whatever I want. It's, it's really cool. Uh, it really... <sighs> It's, it's th I wonder how long they had to figure out and try different things to make this part of the game work because it makes it seamless. Great design fix to the problem of low dice stink in this game, right? Uh, I like that you're trying to get to the top and staying there because if you stay there and you keep hitting it, you're going to be milking those points and milking those points, making it fives and fives and fives and fives. But I also like that you can be knocked off, right? So you're looking at that and you're like, oh, that player's getting a lot of fives. Let me go over there and knock them off. So you're trying to get them up, but you're also trying to get sets for all of the numbers to get the big bonuses. So sometimes you want to go up and just stay there and just hammer it, hammer it, hammer it. Other times you're like, oh, I better get these other ones because I really want to get these big bonuses. But with that being said, you see these other strategies where I've done this in a couple of games where I've gone to a number and I've stayed there and I've focused on that number over and over to drain it to the point where there's none of them left before anyone else got that number. And that means that they're not going to be able to get any of the big bonuses because you need to have one of every number. And if you've taken that number off the board, there's none left. There's only a certain amount of those scoring tokens depending on the number of players. They're not going to get a bonus. And they might be doing the same thing to you on some other number, but if you can get the bonus and they can't, you're in a good position to win. I like that there's that, that another layer of depth and strategy in such a light game that makes it really fun. I can't really think of a lot of things, even really almost even one in this that's a negative. The game is just great. If I were to try to nitpick and come up with one thing, four-player games can definitely be too chaotic for some. Because you've got some plans, you go up here, you're getting knocked down, and you go down here, and you're going up, and then as soon as you finally get there, as soon as you get there, you get knocked down. It's it's a little more chaotic uh, with four players. It's not bad. I still never turned down a four-player game of this. It's just fun. There's not a lot of bad to say here. If you're looking for a nice little quick dice chucking game uh, that has the feeling I can't stop, but it's better. Check out Mountain Goats. Uh, and for those reasons, it's staying in my gaming library because I think I could bring it, play it at restaurants, things like that. Play it with people that don't play a lot of games. Uh, and because of that, it's going to be getting a saxophone serenade. So let's hit it. <laughs> Toppers not only transforms your existing table into a high quality gaming solution, but they now offer full leg kits and dining cover solutions for the full table application. Paired with over 20 styles of thematic game mats in 11 different sizes from notable board game artists like Vincent Dutre, collapsible cup holders, and real cool accessories, experience what thousands of other gamers enjoy by upgrading every game you play with a game topper system. Save hundreds of dollars on Game Topper package deals that are in stock now for immediate shipping at GameToppersLLC.com or click the link below.